So, as most of y'all know, yesterday we pretty much submerged the Forerunner. <laughs> You're on camera now. <laughs> what are these eight year old underwear look All like? Alright, so we didn't think it'd be this deep, but it's this fucking deep. Gabe didn't think it would be this deep. Gabe! Oh my god. Right. So, second update, we got Gabe out here and they're stranded in the water. Not even 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I'm not stuck. Holy shit, can All I right. get to your truck from here? <laughs> oh, no, you can't, dude. No, you can't even stand on it. Okay, look at this shit. Oh, oh shit, Gabe, okay. <laughs> look at this passport laughing his ass off. Today, I thought it'd be a good idea to go ahead and change the oils. That's what we're gonna do. So, the plan is change the oil and drive up to Dallas where Zach is at. And uh, yeah, we can check out his new job. So I don't have a drain pan, so I'm just using like this bucket. I'm like put this trash bag over it. It's like the best way to do it for free. Whenever you don't want to go out to AutoZone and buy an oil change pan that you're only gonna use one time and never use again, probably just trash it or let it sit in the corner for six months. So that's what I'm doing. But yeah, so we cleaned up the Forerunner. Um, as you can tell, there's still some water in the headlights. I need to get that out. But it runs, that's what matters. The interior smells like ass completely. It's really bad in here. I mean, it's honestly not that dirty, but it needs to be cleaned. So at the carpet cleaning up in there. But yeah, so I need to change the oil. Probably need to change the transmission fluid. I don't know yet, but oil is first. That's a necessity. And I don't know how it looks, but yeah, you can see. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's all milky and, and it looks like Looks like there's some water in there. I, mean, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if there is, so that's why I'm changing it. That oil is blacker than midnight. Jesus. Pretty nasty. Got the new filter versus the old filter. Nasty. So now we're going to Dallas to go uh, see Zach and uh, show you guys his new job. And simultaneously, we'll also be doing a review on this. I got another one of these to uh, check out. I figured the best place to review it would be an auto repair shop. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it works. So one thing I forgot to mention uh, in yesterday's video. Oh, okay. Hold on. It still runs weird. All right, so I try to drive off. It's running really weird. It's acting like the transmission is slipping or something, and I got a check engine light that immediately came on. So we we'll go ahead and use this to uh, try and diagnose it. But it's drained out the transmission fluid, and this is what came out. Not good, as you can see. Definitely water got in there. Uh, it's supposed to be red, and this is like brown slash black. So we're gonna go ahead. I, I topped it off. I believe this, so this is seven quart pan, so I think about a gallon came out. So I put a gallon back in of new ATF. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, drive it around the block and see if it's any better. Um, now I was reading as far as uh, most forerunners go. I know this one has the uh, transmission oil cooler on the front, which I think is part of the radiator. I'm not entirely sure, but it goes to the radiator. So. Uh, all in all, like the whole transmission like system holds about 13 quarts and I only put about five in. So hopefully this helps. I definitely need to disconnect the line that goes to the cooler and uh, fill it up with ATF, run it for a couple minutes. Well, not even a couple minutes, but I like, run it to where it pumps all, a lot of the old ATF out because whenever you just drain out the ATF from the transmission, you don't get all of it. So this is only like half of what was in there. So, but it should be better now. We'll see. All right, guys. So we're in Dallas right now. I brought Brian with me. So Long guys. time no see. So I bought a 1990 Jeep Cherokee. It's a four wheel drive. It's got a four and a half inch lift with 33 inch tires on it. Look at this guy. I'm talking. So this dude drops a whole entire thing of like tomatoes, I guess, on the ground. And then picks them back up, puts them in the box. Quality. Anyways, what I was saying is I bought uh, this 1990 Jeep Cherokee. Uh, Four-wheel drive, of course. It's got 33-inch tires, 4.5-inch lift, 
it's pretty nice um, almost done and then uh, we'll do a review soon on that right yeah yeah we should yeah it's pretty cool took it out to Bridgeport when we got this thing stuck and it did pretty well we actually pulled the foreigner through like a shit ton of mud and up a hill yeah I was, I was pretty impressed so yesterday actually uh, Brent and I were going off-roading or we actually were on the way to go off-road <laughs> and uh, this road's really bumpy but anyways Brennan uh, doesn't have a radio and uh, it was just a harness so we're driving along you know doing doing some stupid shit there's some potholes and whatnot but um next thing you know smoke starts billowing out of the damn dashboard it's like a chimney out of the dashboard and like you just smell strong electrical burning so we immediately stopped the jeep we've never hopped out of a damn car i'm sorry damn truck is it a truck or suv technically suv technically suv jeep it's called a jeep all right we never jumped out of a jeep so quick we jumped out popped the hood we didn't have any fire extinguisher, we just had like a cup of water, but luckily whenever we turned the key off, it stopped, it stopped. Yeah. It's, it's burning, so. I do now carry a fire extinguisher in the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. I I don't have one, but, you know. <laughs> Not yet. All right, so we just got here. Key doesn't come out. So, over the past month, the foreigner developed a problem where uh, the key only comes out like half the time whenever you turn it off. So, yeah, now I have to unplug the battery, or, you know. Is this the same bike? Yeah, it's the same bike. This is what, this is what you bought? Yeah. What's up, bro? Let's hear about the bike. All right. Yeah, let's see. Um, top speed is 138. It easily does 130. It got a little sketchy because the bike, literally two times, it felt weightless. <laughs> Perfect. I was weightless. hauling. Yeah, I was hauling. I was doing a buck 30. Shit. And the bike just felt so completely weightless. Like, I couldn't feel the bike underneath me. And so I slowed down, and I did it again, and it felt really weightless again. Sketchy. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I just ordered new uh, clutch lever and brake lever. MD-808 Maxi, I, I said that backwards, but a Maxi Diag MD-808 Pro. So it's like $250-ish. The one you have is probably a little bit more expensive, I'm assuming, because it says Snap-on. Uh, so. Three grand. Three grand, yeah. So, that couldn't, uh, it couldn't fix it, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty fancy. Yeah, it's so. got all these keys you gotta put in. It tells you what keys to put in for different stuff, so. So what exactly is the issue with this one? Uh, the park, it's it's in park. All the gears are working, except for on the dash there, on the screen it's saying put in park. It's in park. Oh, shit. It's pretty straightforward, huh? It's nice. That's for your unloading of the memory. Oh, that has a hole in it. Look at that. Wow. Zach, why don't you get this video? Yeah, Zach, quit sound your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so what year is this car? You don't know? 07. 07, all right. So guys, this scanner does quite a bit. As you can see there, uh, it does the most basic stuff that a lot of people need. So, um, I will mention though that the Forerunner actually developed a uh, check engine light and it is a 96, but for whatever reason, this couldn't uh, connect to it. it. It did not, it wouldn't connect at all. That might be because we drove the Forerunner into a pond. So, could be. It could be. It, it could have messed something up. But I just wanted to note that this would not work with my 96 Forerunner, which I know, is that like the first year of OBD2? It's something pretty, like that. yeah, it, it's pretty early. So, what, is, what was the Miata? The Miata was a uh, 94, 92. 94, yeah, yeah, so that was OBD1. OBD1 yeah. I think it was like I think it was like 95, 96. They went to OBD2. The way this is reading right now, all the all the menus like that is amazing. I mean, when I first plug it in, it's got loads of windows and everything like services, scan, engine OBD2, and now it wants to work. Awesome. <laughs> what the. F it's more likely to an issue with the car than the scanner. Yeah, it's not, the, it's not the scanner. The scanner is amazing right now. So it has it's a trans code. Yeah, it's a transmission problem. Which makes sense because it, you yeah. know, it says... It lost connection with the TCM, okay. transmission connection module. And it's telling you shift to park when it is in park. Yeah, so that it's makes actually sense. like here. It's actually in park. Here's reverse, neutral drive. Right. This is park. When I hit down here, it says shift into park. park. This $250 scanner just did better than the Snap-on. Yes, yeah, the $3,000 Snap-on. That, that, that's pretty impressive. Yes.